Thank you, Tobias. Um, and uh, good, good, good evening, good, uh, good afternoon, and good morning, based on the time zone you are. So the topic today is, is really challenging to speak about hamstring injuries with ultrasound. It's a difficult task in, uh, 12, in 12 minutes is uh, absolutely nothing. But the point is, uh, um, I would like to, to stress is that is it so important with the ultrasound to have a perfect knowledge of the anatomy of, of the uh, of the hamstring muscles. So in each muscle, we need to have a clear idea of uh, where to place the probe, which is the real anatomy, where, where is the uh, location, uh, the expected location of injuries. So we start with uh, some anatomical slides and then this uh, anatomical picture, you see the proximal origin of the uh, semitendinosus and long head of the biceps femoris uh, here. You know that the, uh, the, the two muscles uh, have a common uh, conjoint tendon uh, attaching here into the ischial tuberosity, but it's also important to, to remember that the semitendinosus has a, a, a proper insertion uh, in, uh, into the tuberosity. It, it, it reaches the tuberosity uh, um, uh, as, as a muscle tissue, as you can see here. So when uh, we place a probe in, in a transverse planes at the level of the tuberosity, this is the image we can get with the high resolution ultrasound. Uh, we see uh, different structures. One is the uh, fleshy origin of the semitendinosus that is very uh, flattened here uh, because uh, the fibers reaches the bone uh, at that level, but they don't expand in a more cranial position. And then we have the uh, conjoint tendon uh, going more cranially. Uh, it appears as an oval uh, image when it's examined in its cross section. After that, uh, we have in, uh, other structures to be considered. Uh, don't forget uh, the sacrotuberosus ligament uh, passing over uh, the uh, uh, origin of the uh, two muscles. Uh, it uh, crosses over the ischial tuberosity and its most distal fibers join the, the uh, semitendinosus and the uh, conjoint tendon. And, and they appear hyperechogenic, as you can see in this image. And finally, of course, in a more uh, deep position, uh, we have the tendon of the semimembranosus. So uh, uh, this is a, another uh, anatomical picture showing uh, the uh, sacrotuberosus ligament, and you see the arrangement of its fibers. They cross over uh, the uh, ischial tuberosity and they merge with the uh, uh, most proximal fibers uh, of the uh, structure I mentioned before. And when we see uh, the uh, uh, this, uh, the origin of the uh, pro uh, the proximal hamstring origin, we can see the tendons. We have we see the position of the sacrotuberosus ligament uh, uh, that is easier to see in a more proximal scan, distally, uh, we can uh, separate the, the um, origin of the, uh, the common origin of the semitendinosus and long head of the biceps femoris here in a more superficial position, whereas the uh, semimembranosus origin is uh, deeper, as you can see in this image. And, and this image is very characteristic and, and it resemble uh, the one of sheep trotters. So this is another uh, scan uh, uh, it's a longitudinal plane over the ischial tuberosity in which you see uh, the uh, sacrotuberous ligament uh, crossing over uh, the bony prominence and the, on the, in a cranial position it lies uh, superficial uh, to the greater internus and more distally it uh, joins the, uh, the surface of the hamstrings. In this area, this is the trotter image. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, the, the different origins of the structure I described it before uh, are visible by, by tilting the probe a bit because when you tilt the probe, you can uh, change the echogenicity of the structure and you can uh, differentiate the exact position of the conjoint tendon and the same uh, membranosus. Um, uh, but regarding the sensitivity of ultrasound to demonstrate uh, uh, abnormalities in this area, uh, you need to be very, very um, careful. You have to perform a, a, a very um, a detailed scanning technique and to uh, possibly to compare 
one to one uh, the image of the affected site with the image of the contralateral site. As you can see in this example, this is the um, a, a bigger origin. Uh, you see the degenerative changes here, a cleft a deep uh, closer to bone uh, of the semimembranosus, whereas the conjoint tendon looks very normal. Anyway, uh, magnetic resonance imaging is superior in this area due to its ability to demonstrate fluid and uh, to uh, um, identify the uh, edema uh, on uh, fluid, uh, uh, fluid sensitive sequences. Moving down, uh, th this is the uh, origin of the semitendinosus, uh, the conjoint tendon. We see that the fibers uh, of the semitendinosus arise from the uh, uh, ischial tuberosity, but also from the from the tendon here, and uh, uh, whereas the log head of the biceps femoris uh, arises in a more distal position, this is the long head uh, um, arising from the uh, uh, from the distal tendon here, and uh, this is the uh, semitendinosus uh, uh, muscle. So the, uh, remember that the semitendinosus is uh, easily identified with ultrasound due to the presence of uh, tendinous inscriptions, the so-called rafe. Uh, it's a very strange kind of a, a poneurotic plane located uh, within uh, the muscle belly. Uh, and you see here the profile of the rafe, and it, it, it splits the muscle into two parts, upper and lower. It's not really clear uh, the role of the, of the rafe, but it's thought that it may be protective against injury. So this is uh, an image of the semitendinosus from cranial to caudal, and you see the rafe crossing the, the uh, substance of the muscle and uh, passing from uh, medial to lateral. At the same time, you see the long aponeurosis of the semimembranosus, and that is, is the uh, beginning of the semimembranosus muscle. After removal of the semitendinosus uh, in a more anterior and deeper position, we see the semimembranosus uh, muscle. And, and the semimembranosus is very special because it's characterized by a, 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 a wide aponeurotic sheath. And uh, uh, if you look at the muscle uh, belly, you realize that the, uh, the, the muscle fascicles uh, uh, arise from the aponeurosis in a more uh, lateral position, as you can see here. So uh, this is the apone uh, aponeurosis of the semimembranosus, and uh, this is the beginning of the muscle. So uh, it inserts uh, at the level of the uh, ischial tuberosity in a more anterior position relative to the long head and the semitendinosus. And when we scan the group of uh, hamstrings in a more distal position, we see uh, 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 the uh, as a special arrangement of the uh, aponeurosis uh, that we can, it can recall a three-pointed star that we can call Mercedes-Benz sign in which we have a, a, um, the conjoint tendon in a more superficial position from which uh, the fibers of the semitendinosus and long head of the biceps femoris arise the sciatic nerve on one side, the semimembranosus uh, on the other side. And uh, this is a very important landmark to identify the muscles correctly and uh, to uh, um, start uh, uh, from this position, going down with the probe following the aponeurosis to identify any injury. So regarding uh, biomechanics, I don't want to uh, explain much about that. It's clear that it's uh, the uh, indirect uh, muscle injuries occurring at the level of the hamstrings are uh, related to eccentric con contraction of one or more muscles during, especially in high speed running. Um, it's uh, but it's uh, it's interesting to note that each of these muscles is characterized by a specific injury mechanism uh, uh, um, and uh, uh, it's uh, hypothesized that some correlation between the anatomy of these muscles and the injury patterns. So uh, for the, uh, for example, this is the um, uh, schematic drawing of the semimembranosus and uh, as stated by uh, by uh, Ramon Baelius, uh, um, uh, um, and he published interesting papers in this regard 
uh, we can divide the muscle in, the, in different parts based on the orientation of fibers. The most proximal uh, uh, number A and the intermediate number B uh, are uh, a unipainate, uh, have a unipainate structure, whereas the distal part of the muscle is bipenate, and injuries affecting this part of the muscle seems to be uh, to, to require a longer return to, to play time, so the longer time for uh, recovery. This is the zone C in which you see the uh, bipenate architecture of the uh, distal semimembranosus. Um, the semi, uh, uh, this is the semitendinosus with the rafe, but it, uh, another very interesting muscle is the long, uh, is the biceps femoris arising from the ischial tuberosity with a long head. Then uh, it has a, a bipennate structure, and uh, in a more distal position, it merges with the fibers coming from the short heads. Uh, through a very special aponeurosis uh, that is characterized by a superficial layer and a deep layer in, 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 uh, located in between the two muscle bellies, and, and the, the two muscles will continue in, in a tendon. So this is another critical area for the um, uh, biceps femoris. So in cases of a complete hamstring convulsion, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is of course the most serious acute injury and it requires surgical repair. Uh, um, uh, the injury may affect the conjoint tendon, but also uh, the semimembranosus can be uh, uh, injured in association. Uh, this is an example of a patient with an acute proximal injury avulsion of the tree structures and ultrasound has no problem in these cases, uh, uh, even in the acute phase, because the uh, due to the um, uh, high amount of retraction and the presence of a, um, a huge hematoma in this area. This is the follow-up MR image showing uh, the, uh, the, uh, the denervation changes at the level of the retracted muscles. Um, uh, some uh, difficulties for ultrasound may occur in adolescents due to the fact that, that uh, uh, the uh, a patient have a still immature skeleton, and so there may be uh, um, avulsion uh, of, uh, um, of the nucleus of ossification uh, of the apophysis of the uh, hamstrings uh, from the ischial tuberosity in this case. Uh, in, in uh, cases of an incomplete evolution uh, of the hamstrings from the uh, ischial tuberosity, uh, um, we may have, uh, in general, uh, um, an associated evolution of the long head and, and, and semitendinosus, but uh, uh, isolated evolution of the semimembranosus are more uncommon. When they occur, uh, the ultrasound may be uh, uh, reliable to identify the, the retraction uh, of the origin uh, of the aponeurosis, as you can see here, and as you can see in the uh, corresponding magnetic resonance images of the same case. Uh, to be honest, the, uh, uh, it's more common to find the injuries of the semimembranosus at the level of the proximal myotendinous junction. Anyway, uh, even in the case of, uh, of a tendon detachment of a, of a proximal myotendinous junction tear, uh, uh, the, uh, this condition in general is associated with a uh, prolonged recovery time. So this is an injury at the level of the myotendinous junction of the semimembranosus, and uh, this is the corresponding magnetic resonance uh, uh, scan. So the proximal myotendinous junction, even for the other muscles, is the most injured location. And uh, um, when we have injury at the level of this area, especially affecting the long head of the biceps femoris in general, the, uh, um, the, 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 uh, there is a sh uh, shorter return to play time than injuries affecting the free tendon. Uh, the um, the area is approximately 10, 12 uh, centimeters long, um, uh, is the area where the muscle fibers intersect with the tendon origin. And uh, uh, the longer head of the biceps femoris is that, that, that's proportionally represented as the most commonly affected uh, structure. And uh, remember that the proximal myotendinous junction injuries, it's... Uh, uh, are uh, the most common in terms of frequency, uh, and the uh, second are the intramuscular myotendinous junction injuries, and then uh, distal myotendinous, the, the injuries of the distal myotendinous junction, and finally, myofascial junction stairs. 
So uh, uh, the, um, this is the uh, ultrasound picture of the same case in which you see the uh, uh, disruption of the fibers at, uh, at the level of the uh, proximal myotendinous junction. This is the video clip. You see the hematoma, you see the abnormalities of the fibers. Uh, everything seems to be uh, relatively clear in terms of diagnosis. Don't forget the distal myotendinous junction tearing of the biceps femoris, especially at the point where we have the zippers, so the intersection of two aponeuroses, one superficial and one located in between the long head and the short head in a, a, a vertically oriented here. So remember that injuries may occur at this level, and that this is an example in which you have a disruption of the fibers in between uh, the, two, the two muscles, or even more distally at the level of the short head, affecting the attachment of the fibers into the uh, superficial aponeurosis. Uh, in terms of frequency, remember that uh, at the level of the, uh, the distal myotendinous junction, the long head uh, is the most commonly affected uh, and uh, the combination of the long and short heads of the muscle is also uh, a frequent. Uh, but uh, on the other side, the, the isolated tear of the short head is much more uncommon. Anyway, this is a point uh, uh, characterized by high recurrence rate of injury. Uh, um, it's one of the most commonly uh, re-injured sites uh, regarding uh, hamstrings. So uh, in, uh, in in conclusion, low grade injuries may be treated with non-operative measures, uh, with uh, including pain relief, eccentric lengthening exercises, and uh, uh, graduated return to sport-specific activity. Uh, uh, regarding the, the time to return to play, uh, remember that no prognostic significance has been attributed to, to the, the exact location of the injury or the type of the tear, but. Uh, uh, um, there are some areas within the muscle that, uh, in uh, that in general, they require more uh, uh, um, uh, time uh, uh, for rehabilitation and uh, and healing. Uh, the um, uh, imaging wouldn't be recommended to predict that the time to return to play because the final decision is for the most based on clinical uh, data. Uh, and uh, uh, and this is also due to the fact that, that uh, the recovery time is basically uh, may vary depending on the kind of sporting activity performed by the athlete. Uh, it's important to uh, recognize the level of the injury, and, and when we have a proximal hamstring avulsion injuries, high-grade muscle tendinous uh, uh, junction tears, and chronic injuries with persistent weakness of functional compromise, of course, uh, these kind of injuries require for a surgical repair uh, to enable uh, uh, a return to a pre-injury level of sporting function and to minimize the risk of recurrent injury. The point uh, when you use ultrasound to examine this very difficult area is to uh, review anatomy very careful to have a clear idea in each muscle about the position of the uh, um, uh, aponeurosis uh, of the intramuscular tendons uh, and the, the uh, uh, location, the typical location of the injury uh, at this level. On the other side, it's very important is to uh, um, um, use high technology, high hand technology, because in this case, you can increase uh, your sensitivity to uh, identified mild injuries. Thank you very much.